hi Christine, it's amazing to have you with us today on International Women's Day. And as a woman who's had the most stellar career as a makeup artist and designer and in the film industry, would kind of love to hear a little bit from you about how did you get into this fascinating industry? Um, I think I kind of sort of stumbled into it. It was never enough. Nothing's ever been a deliberate move for me. I kind of just if, if things felt right. Uh, I mean, I started off having a hairdressing salon and kind of sort of selling that and wanting to move back into London. Uh, and, and kind of the rest is, is really history. You know, I kind of ended up sort of um, using uh, the money that I sold my salon for to live and to, to uh, I put the money down for uh, to do an intensive makeup course. Um, and basically had enough money to sort of like survive for a year in London. Um, so it was kind of a bit of a, you know, crack on or, or you know, or give up really. <laughs> and then, and so, so what, what was your first entry into working on a film set? How did that come about? Uh, the, my first entry onto a film set was very, it was kind of almost a, a bit of an accident of errors. Um, uh, I got a phone call, uh, say it was from this place, to, uh, from London Weekend at the time, which is like sort of ITV down on the South Bank. And uh, the woman who was sort of like running the makeup department said, oh, I understand that you're a hairdresser. Um, you know, we're doing a project in the Isle of Man where we need somebody who can do short back and sides for, you know, for, for, the, for the weekend to take up, to go over with the team. So I was like, yeah, I'll go. So I jumped on a plane with these makeup people that I never, that I didn't know. Um, and they basically locked me in the top of a pub in the Isle of Man for like four <laughs> days, started like literally doing short back and sides on people for a 1940s film. Um, and I kind of got to know the girls there. And I think I think it's because I was I was sort of useful to them because a lot of people at the time in the industry didn't weren't trained hairdressers. And I think because I was a trained hairdresser and colorist, I was, I was quite useful to people. Right. Uh, and then I was sort of taken on to a Mike Lee film where it was Life is Sweet. And, you know, one of the... Um, remits that the, the, the makeup designer wanted me to do was she wanted me to make Claire Skinner and Jane Horrocks look like twins so I dyed both of their hair like a copper colour because it's the easiest way you know so I duplicate hair is, is one of the easiest gags of you know making people look similar yeah um we sort of so we did that and uh you know I kind of it was lovely life is sweet actually I mean it's my first ever film my, my favourite film really um, and I, I, I've worked with Mike Lee ever since then. For those who know of Mike Lee, he doesn't have a script. So when I went on to another job and I had a script, I was quite dumbfounded that you actually <laughs> could know what you were talking about. <laughs> well, you I mean, you've mentioned uh, that was a highlight. I mean, I guess winning an Oscar must have been another. How did that feel? How was it to go to the Oscars and, and pick up such a prestigious award? Oh, the Oscars was great. I mean, I, I think you you have to bear in mind anybody that knows me know would know that I'd only just given birth to my second child, Alfie. Um, so I was a bit of a lactating mess. <laughs> which I can see this is all about Women's Day, you know. So yeah. this, this is the truth, guys. Is, is I, <laughs> uh, my my last in memory of of the Oscars was uh, you know winning, which was brilliant. And then around the back, you all have to be interviewed, and I was being interviewed for a couple of hours. Um, and my partner had missed the actual ceremony because he'd gone out for a toilet. And then when I let me back into the ceremony, I literally ran down because it's all done live. And I ran down and just I threw the Oscar at him. I was like, thanks for not being there. And so I grabbed my milking machine. And as I ran out, as I ran out, and Brad Pitt just shouted out, Oi, Blondel, because I've done seven years in Tibet with him. And when I was first pregnant with my first child, and he was one of the first people to know. And um, and he just literally jumped over the seats to give me a hug, and I just like held up my milking machine. I was like, no. And it's like <laughs> then you realise actually it's it's you know it always sounds glamorous until you kind of get into the thick of it, and it's just you know you just got to crack on really. I bet. And so there you are sitting in your makeup bus on a film set today, which is fantastic. I mean, it'd be great to hear um, fr from some of the films you've made. What are the kind of key highlights? Because you've done such different types of films from kind of really futuristic things to, to kind of really historical things what what do you really enjoy the most I, th I think I enjoy kind of pulling it off do you know what I mean I'm, I'm a great believer in teamwork and and part of my job as a designer is really knowing how um you know what what everybody else sort of you know bring in to the table if you like I need to I need to spot people's talents um you know what what they can do and you know how they involve themselves and become part of the team and, and I've got to say, I think one of my proudest moments is, I think, um, you know, when we was doing Topsy Turvy, sort of going in and watching the dress rehearsal, bringing everything to life. 
you know, when we kind of run it as a proper stage show and it was, it just, so I remember looking over at Mike Lee and just sort of wanting to cry, you know, both of us had a tear, you know, but a lot of things were great, you know, doing The Constant Gardener was amazing for me because it was kind of a really hard film, you know, it, it, you've got to, you've got to have a humbleness about you to sort of like go and film in those sort of countries and, you know, realise how lucky you are just to have running water and things. Um, you know, I've had so many great experiences in this industry. It's, it's, it's you know, it really ha is a, um, a life consuming sort of industry in a lot of ways. But then I've also yeah. got my other life, which is me as a mum. You know, so that's, you know, you have to sort of like work the two together. And, uh, you know, there's a great there's a great sort of anecdote of coming back from the Oscars all those years ago and kind of taking my kids down to Brent Cross and, and one of my kids having a tantrum on the floor. You know, and I was just like, oh, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, back to reality with a bump. <laughs> I literally just stepped over him and went and stood in the doorway of Accessorise and watched him. I was just like, is that it? <laughs> oh, God love him. He's never done it since, you know. Oh, but, it, you right. know, I was, I was so kind of, Jesus, I'm a mum again. <laughs> yeah, back to reality. And so, oh, so yeah. one of the things I loved about you when we first met was j just what you've done to kind of inspire and bring on new talent in your industry through setting up the um, your academy. Yeah. And, and just looking at the sheer number of productions and films and TV shows that the people you've trained and brought through the industry are now working on. I guess, what, what's it been like to obviously have your, your existing career and then be a kind of founder of, of something new that's about inspiring new talent? It's, it's, it's what I've always wanted to do. I mean, I said many years ago that, you know, I kind of, I enjoy teaching. I, I've always enjoyed teaching. Even when I had my hairdressers back in the day, you know, I, I, I always, always had a passion for showing people. And do you know, it's, I think it's more than that. I, I learn from teaching. Um, I, it's like sometimes I think when, when you're taught to do something the proper way, you kind of almost forget how to do it as a shortcut you know and sometimes life can be a like, bit like that that you think there's a certain route to something and actually you're making it a much bigger process than what it needs to be you know and uh, and I mean the makeup school was all had always been a passion of mine you know and uh, you know a few things changed in my life um back in 2005 and that was my time for just like okay I need to I need to sort of like do this now you know this needs to be sort of put into motion um, and Peter, who's my business partner, sort of like came around to sort of see us and he was just like, you know, I'd love to do this with you. And I'm just like, well, I'm skin. And I was like, all I can do is the creative side of it, you know, and he was just like, that's OK. Well, I'll sort out all of the finances and the loans and that. And that's and that was, you know, the rest is, is history. You know, we just each each course, you know, I mean, I've always sort of insisted on teaching in a way that, that they get they have teachers in the industry to teach them you know that was always one of my beefs is that is that a lot of people were paying a lot for um for courses and they were being taught by people who hadn't been on set for many a year um and part of my kind of sort of like thing with with the makeup school is that it, it's you know I, I like to I like to see how they're how they're progressing through the industry you know and like a lot of people are just like oh you know you're training people to take your job you know I mean bring it on you know, the first first one of my graduates to take a job for, off of me, they all know, you know, there's a magnum of champagne in it for them. I'll be proud as punch. <laughs> Do you know that's, what I mean? I mean, it's just so, yeah, I mean, I love, I love seeing, I, I mean, I see them sort of all getting on in the industry. One of my girls won a biffa the other year and I was practically, I was just like, literally just, I just wanted to scream from the rooftops. I was so proud. I bet. And so we're really looking forward to having you on Counterculture TV talking about kind of beauty hacks and top tricks and kind of things you've learned. But I guess if we wrap it up for today, it'd be great just to get what, what piece of advice would you give to a woman starting out in, and founding a business or just a woman in business today? Well, I kind of think, you know, I think firstly, my, my best bit of advice is that you're never too old to start, um, you know, thinking about yourself and things. You know, I, I think people sometimes worry that they're in their 30s or 40s or, or even 50s. I've retrained somebody in, in their 50s. I've done a few people in their 50s, you know, and it, it's kind of, you know, you're never too old to sort of think about yourself and what you want to do and everything. You know, it's, it's like the, you have got to take a bit of time out and just think, you know, it's wonderful to do everything for your family and things. But there is a point where you've kind of got to say, I need a bit of me time. You know, you've got, you got to really um, uh, like yourself, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And and you deserve it, do you know. What I mean, more than anything else, I think that's my my parting punch is is that as a as a woman, and you know, you you really deserve to to get everything that you know is coming your way. But you've got to work hard for it. 
Yeah, absolutely. You clearly have. And, and just a one final thing then. So are you able to tell us where you're on set today and what you're filming? I can, I can tell you a little bit. So I'm, I'm actually swarmed by NDAs all over the place, but I am sure. down in Dover and I am working on a big film that's got a superhero in. That's all I can say. Well, we'll, we'll, um, <laughs> we'll wait to see what comes out. In as, soon as, I can tell you, as soon as I can tell you, I'll be, I'll be just putting it on the platform. I, you know, so and I'm kind of hoping with counterculture, you know, one of the things that I'm super excited about is like almost having something like live on show. We'd like, we'd like to do something, you know, we, we've talked about it, doing something a bit different where, you know, we can, we can kind of sort of talk to people and they can ask questions and things. And I kind of think that's, that's what I'm looking forward to about getting involved with all of you. We hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave us a like and don't forget to subscribe. And why not check out some more videos on our channel.